Hey guys, hopefully you can see me just getting set up for today's presentation. Happy inauguration, happy Wednesday. It's a hard day to stay focused today. Uh, just wanting to watch everything going on in DC and I'm so glad everyone is safe and things went smoothly. I'm gonna give everyone a few minutes to tune in here. and get myself set up. All right, well, looks like you guys are joining quickly. I already have nine people on here. All right, well, looks like everyone's joining very, very quick. I'm gonna wait to make sure that Liz is on. Uh, Liz is our Facebook community manager and I just wanna make sure she's here. So Liz, um, when you get on, give me a comment so I can see that you're here. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Barbara. Happy Wednesday. Hey, Lynn. Thanks for joining tonight. Hi, Nicola. Welcome. Thank you guys so much for being here. Wow, so many people on tonight. Hey, Katie. Hey, Kristen. I'm looking for Liz. Liz, are you on yet? Hey Jess, so good to see you all today. It was a cold one today here in uh, upstate New York, about 26 degrees. I still have to take my dog out for a walk tonight, which I am dreading. <laughs> Hi, Kathy. Hey, Allison. Hey, Denise. Welcome everyone. Got a minute till six o'clock, so I'm just gonna wait here for uh, Liz for a minute to get started. Hey, Christy. Hey, Sarah. Thank you. <laughs> I know it's cold out. Can I, if everyone can comment, how what's the temperature where you are today? Hey, Natalie. Welcome. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I feel like seasonal affective disorder is something that uh, people don't really talk about too much. It's very taboo. Um, so I'm hoping that I can give some, some insight. 24, 20 in Buffalo, seven degrees in Canton, New York. Oh my God. I thought we had it bad. It's been a pretty mild winter here, actually. Um, so far, only one big snowfall in downtown Ithaca. Yeah, everyone's in the cold. Nobody is somewhere. Is anywhere and anyone lives somewhere warm or have the the sense to not live in such a cold place? I don't know what all of us are doing up here. 26, 70, 75, Deborah, where are you? Yeah, you're with me in Syracuse, Nicola, 23. Yeah, we hunker down in the winters here in New York. All right, well, it's 6.01 and it looks like there's about 30 of you on here tonight, which is amazing. So I'm gonna get started. Um, Liz will be moderating tonight. I will try to answer questions as I'm going through. Um, so please, please um, be commenting and interacting as I go. I, I will be paying attention as much as I can. Um, all right, so I'm going to share my screen with you and we're going to get started. Hey, Liz is here. Great. Um, here, before I share my screen, sorry. Um, hi, Linda. Hi guys. All right. So before I get into things, um, I just wanted to preface this by saying, 
I'm here to share my personal story and what I've experienced um, because I know that when I was going through my thing, I felt so alone in it and I felt like no one else felt the way that I did. So this is my personal experience and um, the methods that I've used, um, but I'm not a trained therapist or psychiatrist or psychologist. So I just want to put that out there that this is just my personal experience, but everyone is, everyone is different. Um, everyone ex experiences depression and anxiety differently. Um, so today I am going to go through um, some of the reasons that seasonal affective disorder happens and talk about some strategies for managing it. So let's get into it. Hey Ellie, good to see you. So many familiar faces here tonight. Okay, hopefully you can all see this. Great. All right, so managing seasonal affective disorder. I just wanted to put a trigger warning up. I do plan on discussing depression, suicide, and suicidal ideation. Um, and I know that might, some people might find that disturbing. Um, so I just wanna put the warning here. Um, if you or someone you know is suicidal, please contact a physician go, or go to your local ER um, or call the suicide prevention hotline, which I have called multiple times in my life. Um, for the United States, the number is one 800 273 talk or message the crisis line you can text 741741 both programs are free and confidential and are available 24 7. All right, so a lot of you are probably here because you heard that we're giving away a giveaway uh, valued at over $200. Um, we'll be giving away these therapy, bright light therapy lamps, as well as our new energy bundle, which is our three um, cannabinoids, CBD, CBG, and CBN. There's gonna be three winners chosen throughout the hour here. And the way that you win is by commenting. So basically there's gonna be a slide that shows up that says winner three times throughout my presentation. And the last one to comment uh, when the winner slide comes up wins the giveaway. So let's get started. Okay, so I wanna start by telling my story. Um, this is a picture of me and my dog, November 20th, 2018. Um, I wrote here that it's, from the outside, it's really hard to identify when somebody's struggling with depression and seasonal affective disorder. This looks like a normal, happy picture. But um, when this picture was taken, I actually was experiencing severe depression. I was suicidal. And this was actually the first time I had left my house in over a month um, because my depression brain was telling me that it was dangerous to go outside, that the winter was going to kill me, that I was gonna die somehow if I went outside. My, I was having horrible anxiety and panic attacks. So I took this picture as a reminder to myself that, um, you know, this was a step, a good step that I felt good by going outside. Um, but this was a, a forced smile and, and a really, really dark time in my life. Um, my journey to recovery from this bout of depression took over seven months. So these things can take a long time. They feel like they're endless. And I know you can feel very hopeless through them. I know I did. Um, but I'm here and I'm standing here on the other side. And that's why I decided to do this presentation tonight, because I wanted other people going through the same thing to look at me and see in themselves that they can get through it. Um, I have experienced seasonal affective disorder since I was 16 years old. Um, I, I have pretty severe seasonal affective disorder. Um, I started really realizing it um, as I was getting older, I started throwing up in the winters every single morning throwing up. 
Um, and that was a, caused by the anxiety and depression. It was a pretty severe side effect of the anxiety and depression. And finally, when I was in my 20s, I decided that I was going to move to Austin, Texas for a winter to see if that made things better. And it did. And that's when I really knew that um, I had seasonal affective disorder. And this was something that I was going to be dealing with for my whole life. Um, it wasn't something that I could just ignore or that was gonna go away on its own. Um, so I have been working very, very hard with my therapist um, to figure out ways to manage my seasonal affective disorder. And I think a lot of people just settle and choose that they're going to just deal with um, the, the effects of seasonal affective disorder, but I'm here to tell you, you don't have to and there's ways to make it better. So what is seasonal affective disorder? It's basically a depression that um, is usually related to the changes in the season. Usually during the winter months, uh, you usually feel like you have no energy, you're having mood swings, you're feeling sad, you're feeling hopeless. And yeah, people say that, it, just brush it off and say it's the winter blues, but um, you really don't have to tough out seasonal affective disorder on your own. And there are proactive steps you can take um, to feel better and get through it. So how do you know if you have seasonal affective disorder? Um, so there are signs and symptoms of seasonal affective disorder may include feeling depressed most of the day, losing interest in activities you once enjoyed, having low energy, having problems with sleep, experiencing changes in your appetite or weight, feeling slug sluggish or agitated, having difficulty concentrating, feeling hopeless, worthless, or guilty, or having frequent thoughts of death or suicide. Have any of you guys ever felt any of these? I know in the winter, I definitely have issues with energy. I get really tired, lethargic. I, yeah, have a hard time. Like, I, I start, I think my, some of my warning signs are I start really isolating myself. I don't go out and see friends. I don't see family. Um, yeah, definitely. All right. So there's this assessment form that I used to do um, with my psychiatrist every time I saw them um, from Stanford Medicine and we'll post this assessment, it's available online. Um, this assessment will help you understand the severity of your depression and where you're at. Um, in that last picture, uh, I, in this assessment, I had been at a, a high risk, the severe severe depression. Um, and it was, yeah, seven months of feeling that no, things were never going to get better, that I was feeling these things nearly every day, and it was never going to change. And I remember filling out this form every two weeks being like, this is a stupid exercise. I'm never going to feel better from this. And I was reviewing my forms with my psychiatrist, and it was amazing to watch the progress of going from uh, high risk to not at all depressed over the course of the last two years. So I did heal and I did get better. Um, so I will share this form with you guys after this presentation. Um, and I do recommend doing this with somebody, um, preferably with a professional um, to assist you as you're doing it. But it, it was a really good tool for me to understand where I was at. Um, whether I was severe or mild or feeling good. The cause of seasonal affective disorder is um, that sunlight causes a drop in serotonin and melatonin and it disrupts your biological clock. So it's pretty natural that we get sad um, or feel tired or can't sleep in the winter because of the loss of that sunlight. So I'm gonna now just jump into strategies for ma managing seasonal affective disorder. And these are things that I have found work for myself. I'm sure you guys all have some great strategies. So please feel free to share those as I'm going through this. Um, but I'm gonna walk through what I call, oh, winner, we got a winner. That, Liz, you'll have to name the last person. It looks like uh, Brandy Lynn Hernandez was the last one from my end. 
So Brandy, you're winning our first prize. Congrats. Thanks for being here and commenting. Um, okay, so now that now we're going to jump into uh, winter my what I call my winter arsenal. I feel like a soldier going out into the uh, into the cold with everything that I have started collecting. And for me, um, you know, this is kind of, there is a financial investment here, but to me, it's an investment in my mental health and there's nothing better that I can invest in. So uh, for a long time, I would be like, I don't have the money to do that. It's not a priority, but I'm making mental health my priority and getting through the winter is my priority. So I'm going to invest in my arsenal. And I think everyone has, can have different things for what goes in their arsenal. The first thing in my arsenal is therapy. Um, I, my therapist and my psychiatrist absolutely saved my life. Um, and I am so lucky to have such great resources here in Ithaca. Um, so if you are struggling with depression or anxiety, I definitely recommend uh, going to see a therapist and psychiatrist. Um, if you're looking for a good therapist, you can go to psychologytoday.com and you can really get down to the nitty gritty search for exactly what you're looking for and find somebody in your area that takes your health insurance. Um, for me, I pay a $15 copay pay for going to therapy. It's the best $15 I've ever spent. All right, the other big thing that I do for uh, seasonal affective disorder is light therapy. And that's why we're giving away a bright light um, therapy lamp tonight. Um, these are two of my favorite ones, the Theralite or a bright light therapy lamp here for $77 or the Carex Daylight Classic Plus Bright Light Therapy Lamp for 114. These can be found on um, Amazon. Um, I really like these because they, at, mine is on right now, actually, they, first of all, give you good lighting for Zoom since we're all stuck on Zoom, but also they're really effective because they mimic the sunlight. They come from above and they um, hit your pupils as if as sunlight would, and that actually um, adds to the benefits of the bright light therapy. So these are two that I would recommend. Take note, we'll post uh, links to them later as well. Oh, winner. I saw Shireen Zito, Zito, Shireen Zito. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name, but you're our next winner, Shireen. Thanks for being here. All right, that's two winners. We got one left, guys, we got one left. All right, the next thing in my winter arsenal. Um, okay, I love these pants from Dovetail Workwear. Um, first of all, they're amazing if you're like out and about and you have an active job. Um, the reason that I love these pants is because they are fleece infused and forever I wanted like flannel line pants um, or like something really like warm pants so I wouldn't have to wear base layers but I like base layers too but these are the warmest freaking pants ever and if you um, have an active job they're they're great I love them so I feel like a total badass when I wear those so that's dovetail workwear fleece and fused denim. The other thing, yeah, I used to just like, yeah, I just didn't invest in warm things and I'd go outside unprepared. So I'm just saying like, be prepared, like invest in your warm clothes. Get a nice warm base layer. I have this one from Columbia that has this like metallic inside, which my therapist calls my sweet potato clothes. <laughs> they like reflect light back to you and uh, it's supposed to um, be warmer. But so I like to wear these under my clothes and then just a, um, a pair of warm gloves. Uh, many pairs of warm gloves because I always lose mine. Um, so whatever it takes to make you warm, invest in those things. It is worth it. Okay, the next thing is car preparation. And this was something that when I was really in the darkest days of my depression, like I couldn't even get in my car to drive because in my head, I like, it wasn't safe and my tires were going to slip on ice and go off the road and your head just, you know, all the accidents in the winter, your, your anxiety just starts really going. So no, number one thing that I've invested in is snow tires. And I make sure to get those on. Thanksgiving is usually my trigger. 
um, for when to get the snow tires put on the car, but those just give me peace of mind. And then the other things are just heated. There's all these fun heated things now. Um, so if you don't have electric seats in your car, you can get an electric seat heater for your car, which helps with the transition from inside to outside. Um, and you can also get these are really cool. I talked about this in my Instagram story, this um, Zippo rechargeable hand warmer. Oh yeah, I have mine right here. So my friend just gave me this and I think it's the coolest thing ever because I used to use those um, throw away heat packs, heat pads. Um, and this thing gets like really freaking hot and it comes with a string and you can put it around your neck and put it down your coat. So it's like having a personal warmer, which is so nice. Um, I've tried some of the heated clothing. I did buy like a heated shirt off of Amazon, but I did not like it. And I would recommend something like this over the heated clothing. But I don't know, have any of you tested out any heated, um, heated clothing that actually works? Yeah, heated seats was really a game changer for me. Um, I did I did get a car that has heated seats and I never realized how amazing they were before, but like getting an electric seat heater like this is just an easy way to do it. And they're like 20 to 40 bucks. Um, so it's worth it. All right, another one there, Rhonda Scott. Rhonda Scott looks like my next winner. Congrats, Rhonda. You are the third and final winner for today. Awesome. I'm so excited to send you guys those things. Um, just uh, for the winners, uh, Liz will follow up with you all for addresses and we'll send those out to you this week. Um, all right. Next thing in my... Ooh, sorry, guys. <laughs> next thing in my um, winter arsenal is exercise and cold exposure. And these are the hardest things for me to do in the winter. I just don't wanna leave my house. I just get like, yeah, I just don't wanna go out in the cold. But if you have the right things like the heated Zippo or the warm gloves, warm hat, warm coat, base layer, being outside is actually, you know, it's good, it's fun. And it's good for your mental health. Last winter was like my first good winter I've had since I was 16 um, after, you know, implementing all of these different strategies. And I think one of the reasons that it was really good was because I actually went out twice a day to walk my dog and exposed myself to the elements and like proved to my brain that it's not actually as bad outside as my brain is, anxiety brain is making me feel. Um, yeah, hikes, going on walks and exercise with four kids, I'm sure is very tough. I think just being a mom is exercise. So good for you. <laughs> if you have kids and they're making you run around, I'm sure you're getting all the exercise you need. Yeah, this is my pup, Zeke. He is good motivation to go outside, although he is the laziest, laziest dog in the world. Okay, and the last thing is, which I know this can definitely be um, in budget or even possible in years like COVID, but for me, the the strategy that my therapist helped me work on was that I needed I needed a timeline that there was going to be some relief, a break at some point, that I wasn't going to be cold and gray every single day, that I need to go somewhere warm. For my mental health, I need to leave, whether it's for a weekend, a week, a month, I need to get myself somewhere warm, get vitamin D in the winter. Um, and for my own mental health, I need to have that trip planned by the end of August or maybe the end of fall. But my goal is by the end of August, I know that at some point in the winter, I'm going somewhere warm. Uh, last year, my boyfriend and I got to go to Costa Rica. This was the first time I planned a trip like this. And it made so much difference knowing that I could go some, that I was going somewhere, that I was leaving. Um, this year, of course, we can't really freaking go anywhere. Um, but my boyfriend and I decided we're going to drive because it's worth it. And we're just going to drive south until we see some sunshine. Um, and you can do trips for, you know, if you can make that happen, pay for the gas and get a cheap hotel or a cheap Airbnb. There's, there's ways to get sunshine in the winter. But it's definitely um, a, a big um, 
like turning it's I, I like to leave it between February and March um, because I think that's the hardest time and for me it's like something to look forward to um, I get that vitamin d and then that extra vitamin d like pushes me through the winter so if you can take a trip I would definitely re recommend I went to the beach for a long weekend last October and cried <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> it makes such a difference yeah it's time for some road trips this year. All right, and then of course, this is a head and heel presentation in the head and heel group. So we're gonna talk about cannabinoids and how cannabinoids can help with seasonal affective disorder. So um, I take all of, well, so this is our new bundle of energy, um, which we're gonna post. We have these new bundles. So this would normally cost 155, but when you bundle these, you can save $20. And the bundle of energy is specifically to help power you through the winter. So we have the CBD, which you're taking every day. This is to combat normal anxiety, uh, depression. For me, CBD has become um, a cornerstone of my uh, depression management. I do also take antidepressants. Um, so I do take both for those of you who are curious if you can take both, um, you can take both. So I take CBD um, and I take that daily. In the winter, I take actually about 80 milligrams of CBD, but that's, that's a very high dose. Um, CBG, I was taking a lot today. CBG is energizing. It's like liquid motivation. Um, and when you don't want to have another coffee and you're like coffee makes you anxious. Coffee makes your heart race. It makes you sweat. Um, I, if you're an anxious person, naturally coffee is not the best solution for you. And um, I drink a lot of coffee to get through my day and get through my work. I was looking for an alternative uh, that wouldn't cause the panic heart racing feeling. So CBG is that for me. It is my liquid energy and I use it instead of coffee in the afternoon. I do still drink some coffee in the morning, but I use it to help me get through the day. And then I have no problem sleeping. I am like the worst person to wake up in the morning. Uh, but for those of you who are having trouble sleeping and who need that extra support because your circadian rhythm has been thrown off by the, uh, by the change in sunlight, our CBN oil is a sedative um, that naturally comes from the hemp plant and um, it can help you sleep through the night. What, uh, shoot, I just saw a question. Oh, what makes the CBD or CBG differ in effect? Well, if you've heard, so they're basically, they're different cannabinoids, just like THC is a cannabinoid that give, gives you a high effect that that's what gets you high in cannabis cbd and cbg are other cannabinoids and they have different effects um, so they're just impacting your um, your brain differently Just looking at the questions that you guys are coming in. Sorry, I didn't freeze there. Just seeing if there's anything here. Does anyone have any questions? That's the um, the end of my presentation. I'm happy to stick around and answer questions for a while and, and have more of a discussion. The CBG really keep you focused and feeling alert like coffee does. I think so, our employees think so. You can go read the reviews on the website about CBG. It of course impacts everybody differently. Um, so you'd have to test it out. How much CBG should you take? That's a great question. Of course, it's gonna be different for everybody. Um, and I've experimented a bit with it. This is my CBG oil. Um, today I took two because I was having two full droppers because I was having an impossible time um, focusing today, but usually one and a half is good for me. The thing with CBG is like 20 mil, I can take 80 milligrams of CBD and that's a good dose for me. 20 milligrams of CBG is very strong. It's like more potent. So I would never take 80 milligrams of CBG. Um, that's different for everyone. Start low and slow. Um, 
you know, start maybe with half a dropper, see how you feel, then go to full dropper, then go to a dropper and a half. If I combined all three in one day, would that be okay? Yes, absolutely. I do combine all three in one day. I think cannabinoid medicine is the future of medicine. Um, it's the future of cannabis. And as we uh, of get more research and learn more about all the cannabinoids, we'll be able to give very targeted uh, effects, exactly what you want at exact doses, which I'm just so excited about. But this cannabinoid, the CBG, CBN, CBD, we're like one of the first companies to be doing this. So it's really exciting. You guys are, are on the, um, the cutting edge of cannabinoid medicine. I don't get the crash feeling from CBG that I get from coffee, no, but I do, like, how do you know if you've taken too much? I, when I took too much, everything was like an argument for me. Like I was very um, intense, I was very intense. Uh, so you definitely get like the heightened intensity like you would when you have coffee, but there was no crash from that. I was just annoying Alan in the heart office all day and he was gonna kill me. Um, there's a lot of comments coming in, guys. I'm just trying to keep up. Let's see if I can see more of them. Nicola, thanks for joining. Yeah, thanks everyone for joining. I'm gonna stay on and answer questions, but if you wanna drop off, congratulations to our three winners. Um, we will be posting the this video so you can refer back to it. And we'll be posting links to some of the things in my personal winter arsenal. Um, so you guys can check those all out um, and make sure you check out the bundle of energy that's live now on the website. We'll, we'll put that first. Oh, thank you, Ellie. Thanks, Linda. Brandy, congrats on winning. What do you guys have in your winter arsenals? I'm so curious if you were to think of something that helps you get through the winter, what would it be? Yeah, let's talk about like, yeah, when we would start feeling the effects from these things. So first of all, I think you need to be taking CBD daily to, for it to um, build up in your system. So I would be taking CBD daily. I don't take the CBG daily. I only take it as needed. And CBN I don't take because I have no trouble uh, sleeping. Warm socks, long baths. Yes, uh, if you guys haven't tried our lavender bath bombs yet, they are the best for baths. We have lavender CBD bath bombs. There's two per pack and they're 20 bucks. They're great. Acupuncture and salt floats. Yes, um, you know, I used to be really afraid of needles and Alan introduced me to uh, our local acupuncturist. Actually, good story. Our local acupuncturist was the first ever to hold our products on her shelves. And I remember going there and seeing them on her shelves and we were so excited just at our little uh, main, main street in Homer. It was amazing. But I did acupuncture and uh, sauna therapy with her for, uh, a few winters ago and I was going uh, once every other week to sit. She had this little one person sauna, which was amazing. And it had light therapy too. And I do acupuncture too. I miss that. I would totally be doing that right now if there wasn't um, COVID, it, I miss her. Hot chocolate, turmeric, ginger. Yes, I have had, <laughs> should see my desk. I have like 15 teacups to my left uh, because I've had, I've been drinking tea all day. Yeah, we have bath bombs. Yeah, we launched them for the holidays. Um, yes, definitely try out the bath bombs. Yoga. Ooh, there's an infrared sauna in Rochester. Yeah, I wish we had a sauna in Ithaca we could rent out. Oh, electric throw blanket. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's the other thing I do have. I got um, 
heat pads, little heat pads that I bring around the house with me everywhere I go. We used to have, we have the ones that are just beans that you can microwave, but then we got the electric ones, which were a total um, upgrade, total upgrade. Vitamins, yes, I do. I should have included, by two. I take vitamin D and zinc actually prescribed by my psychiatrist. So those are definitely helpful to get through the winter as well. Um, floating, I, I, Alan got me a float tank for my birthday. I haven't done it yet. I'm very curious about float tanks. Thanks, Georgette. I'm so glad you like our products. <laughs> Christy. Yeah, the hot tub bathtub uh, conundrum. I always talk, I always think about that when I, in a future home, if I had the choice, if I have a hot tub or a bathtub. My, we're really spoiled because my boyfriend's parents um, have a hot tub in their living room, which is the funniest thing ever because they, it's not like this whole fancy, crazy thing they just his dad worked uh grounds at cornell for his whole life and he was out shoveling and clearing snow so he was always in pain so he put a hot tub in his living room which was genius weighted blankets yep when i was dealing with my depression my my dad actually bought me my first sun lamp i should talk about this a little bit so your depra your depression brain is going to tell you that the sun lamp is not going to help you which my depression brain told me. And in that, those seven months when I was struggling with depression, I didn't want to turn my lamp on because my brain told me it wasn't going to help me. So my dad bought me the lamp and a, um, one of those heavy blankets. Um, and I love the heavy blankets. Great when I'm anxious. Um, and now that I am more mentally stable, and I use my lamp. I didn't really talk about how to use the lamps, but I use my lamp every day at work. It sits on my desk. Now that I'm on Zoom all day, I keep it on because it gives me good light. But basically, if you can expose yourself for at least 45 minutes to an hour, let's say you're watching a show on your computer or something, you can put the lamp on. And if you do an hour a day, they're proven that there's diff uh, you'll see a difference in mood from that. For me, the bright light like keeps me really energetic because if I turn it off, it's like dead dark in here so it's like it's like bringing sunshine into the room that gives me light and energy essential oils lavender i love lavender i have like a lavender shrine um I'm anxious about being anxious. <laughs> That's the best line ever, Rhonda. Yes, I get anxious about being anxious. That is so funny. <laughs> it's so true, it's so true. And people who don't have anxiety really just don't know. They, like my boyfriend's never experienced anxiety. He just doesn't know how it feels. But yes, totally. All right, guys. Well, I hope that all this information is helpful. Um, we will follow up with you all, all the winners. Thank you for joining. Um, we're gonna be going live again next month. Um, and if you guys have things that you think of that are in your winter arsenal that you love, please post the links to them in the group so other people can see them and we can share them all together because I know we're all struggling. And winter sucks and it's really cold, uh, but we're gonna get through it. We're gonna do it together with the help of CBD and everything else in our winter arsenal. It takes an army to beat uh, seasonal affective disorder for sure. So I'm so grateful for this community. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much for tuning in. And I hope that you found all this information helpful. Have a great night.